father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you is feel? Is that the one that put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the scratches? Pictures? You want, I'll, I got I'll scratches. You, I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep hanging on, outside keep of it. Monkey. Hit the road. Dude, I promise you, you're going to get yours and you're going to get I don't give a fuck. Good. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're going you to bring the fucking army. I don't give a fuck. This make you feel? Huh? You're filming my <laughs> father and my. Okay. He said, "Bless you, but please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Please, leave me alone. please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop! I don't. Stop stalking me, please. I can't live here anymore because you stalk me. That's no, why I'm no, no. Leave me. me alone. No, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, leave you alone. zero minutes. I don't want to. I hear that every day. We need to talk. You never shut up, so we don't. You need to talk. You're like this guy. You got stuff you want to say. Um, gosh, but you never shut up. So I don't know what the hell else you have to say, Mr. Perry, that you haven't already said. There's no lie that you can tell me that I would believe. There's probably not much that you could say to me. You know, you want to bribe me. I'm going to threaten and bribe and threaten and bribe and threaten and bribe. I'm going to cause problems for you, and then I'm going to fix them if you do what I say and live your life in a way that you're miserable and horri horrified and terrorized 24-7, even worse than you are now. Uh, you, there's nothing that you could say that I wouldn't want to slap the shit out of you. you you've made everybody miserable. Please, I'm going to say this again. This is the Charles Perry Stalker Podcast. It's the 18th of March, 2023. I I need to, to say this again. Everybody has is getting very tired of uh, wasting their time having to repeat the same thing for Mr. Perry over and over and over and over, things most people don't have to be told at all. He's having to be told over and over and over, and he's still not getting it. It's just going right over his head. We found out Mr. Perry has Huntington's disease, which causes paranoia, delusion, psychosis, hallucinations. He sees things that aren't there. He's imagining things that aren't real. And impaired cognitive reasoning. He can't put two and two together for anything. If you make people upset with you, they're not going to like you. If you're mean to them, they're not going to like you. They're not going to want you around anymore. So that's how we found out he has Huntington's disease. He's very cruel. The only thing he cares about is who told on me. He ruins people's lives, devastates them. He's taken everything and every person I love, everything I work hard for. It tell you know threatened my family. Um, I don't know if he threatened them to them, but he threatened them in a way that police heard it um if they don't if i feel like they're leaking i'm going to tell them all the horrible stuff i'm going to do to, the, to their loved one and they're going to help me do it and if they don't i'm going to have the epa shut their businesses down or the tax people get get shut everything go go find some mistake or make one up and freeze up all their accounts and ruin them so i've stayed away from my family so you can't accuse them of leaking so you've caused it, alienated me from my family. I moved to Oklahoma. That's the second time I moved to get away from you. I don't want to hear what you think. I moved twice. They, I went to a lot of trouble to pick up my life, start all over again in a new place, and uh, get away from you. So I didn't have to hear what you what you think. And uh, when you do something that is illegal, it's outside social norms. It's deviant. It's offensive to normal people, civilized people. Um, then, then that means that's something people did not don't like. They dislike it. It's it's wrong morally and it's wrong legally for you to pee, pack, coerce, go into a courtroom and under oath lie, bold face lie. It's illegal for you to you know perpetrate a deception upon a court of law. And it's illegal for you to threaten somebody into doing something they don't want to do. Or bribe. Buy a lie money, we call it. And you do that constantly. It's, Ill it's illegal to murder. It's illegal to attempt murder. You guys meet with a hitman once a week, don't you? Or you sit down and talk about getting a hitman once a week. We hear it every time. Every fucking time. You have cops all over you. I need the protectioner or they wouldn't do that. So... When you do things people don't like, they're not going to like you. I moved twice not to be any anything to do with you, Mr. Perry, not to have a conflict with you, not to have any contact with you or from you. There's nothing you have to say that I wouldn't slap the crap out of you. You want to talk. 
Don't y'all all weirdos want to talk? I want to explain. I want to tell. I, I don't want to hear it. I've already told you once, once before. There is one place that I will talk to you. You have your attorney make arrangements at the police department, preferably in Manford. Since you killed their chief, I want to hear you explain that down at their office. We're going to Mirandize you. You're going to waive your right to counsel. And you're going to sit and explain to me and Chief Ridley why you killed Chief Miller and framed Mike. And that's all I want to hear. I want to hear what, what's the deal with Monique, who's the muffin man. I, I want to hear, uh, I want you to make a list for me of all your victims and where they are right now and how we can get them here so that I can speak to them face to face, me personally. And that's all I want to hear from you. I don't want to know how you feel. Does anybody feel sorry for Ted Bundy? Ted Bundy murdered all these women. Beat the shit out of them with a bat. Blood everywhere. Very gruesome crime scenes. Families lost moms, daughters, sisters, brothers. Uh, sisters, I think he went after women. Same thing with anybody feel sorry for John Wayne Gacy or Jeffrey Dahmer. Or the BTK. Or John Cooey. John Cooey the one who took little Jessica, nine-year-old little Jessica, right out of her bed. Across the street and down the road a little bit. About a hundred feet, I think. Went far to his house and raped the shit out of her for days while police and her dad were looking everywhere for her. And then he buried her alive, put her in a garbage bag, dug a hole, put her in the hole, and buried her. And she was found dead. She suffocated, needless to say. And it had her little fingers poking through the garbage bag with her stuffed animal in her arm. Anybody feel sorry for John Cooey? Mr. Perry, you have tried to kill me. You have taken everything important to me. You've ruined my credit. You've ruined my reputation. You've tried to put me in jail a hundred thousand times over false pretenses. You've provoked. You've tried to entrap. You've invaded my privacy. You've taken, you've had my car wrecked four and five times. You had somebody throw a brick at me on the freeway trying to kill me. Had I not seen your guy at the end of the drive and gone out a different way, it might have. It delayed me about two minutes. So it hit the pavement first and then busted my engine in two, bounced up underneath my car. Had I not gone out that way and gone out the way I normally did, I would have been right up behind him and it probably would have hit, that brick would have hit me in the head. Killed me dead. You did that on purpose. You did it maliciously. You did it intentionally. There's not a conversation that you and I are going to have that I'm not going to want to kick the fuck out of you. There's no lie that you can tell me that I would believe. You, it's, you forget who it is you're talking to. You also forget that you can't name people that are involved in our you need to know. You can't name even one. You don't quote, quote even one meeting. For 10 years, every day, all day long, we quote everything you say in your mi meetings where you're planning this shit. We get the information before you do it, not after. Most people, that would be a deterrent. If you had the good sense to stop after getting caught every day for 10 years, what do you think we're going to do with all that? They're building a criminal case against you, sir. We're not doing this because we're bored. I have police protection because I need it. You're a very dangerous man. You're not going to cause a crisis and then come and act like the hero. That's what you think you're going to do. If I take her car, then she'll call me. We have heard him say that over and over. It's like, oh my God. Wow. wow. Who the hell thinks like that? You know, there are people, there was a man in my life that died of cancer that I loved very much. Who came into my life, looked at the devastation you caused. You caused it intentionally. You caused it maliciously. And begin to clean up your mess. And he won my heart. And I will never forget him. You're deeply despised. Everyone hates you. I don't care what you think. And I don't care what you feel. If you liked women, you would do what women like. You wouldn't ruin them. And that's all you've done for I, since I've known you. Is ruin 
and, and get every and I'm he he does, he does one thing he gets caught I'm sorry and then starts planning the next thing. Every day it's something. You're mad because you got caught and no one feels sorry for you. They don't feel any more sorry for you, Mr. Perry. You need to start managing your expectations properly. Because you expect people not to have, nor you don't have normal emotions. We can explain this till the cows come home. You'll never understand it. You don't have it. It's not in you to understand it. How everyone else sees things. We can get information because people hate you. Nobody invited you here. Nobody feels sorry for you. You're antagonizing. You're causing problems. Didn't the guy in, in Creek County tell you? You sure can dish it out, but you can't take it. And you're, you, here's the thing. She's not doing anything but expressing normal anger anybody would feel in her situation. There's no, Nothing's happening to your cars. She's not ruining your cars. She's not trying to take your house away. She's not trying to ruin your relationships. So why are you doing that to her? And then she calls you guys a name, like princess or something, and you act like you're, you're the injured party. You're not the injured party. You had that coming and then some. So quit, 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 quit bothering everybody with that. So we hear, we hear a new one this week that Mark Warman wants to be told every time his clients call the name. And we're like, oh my God, you are kidding me. Didn't the guy in Creek County already explain that one to him? How there's not, uh, nobody feels sorry for him. That he got called princess. He's actually proving that out. He's taking cars. He's ruining people's lives. He's causing major, profound, catastrophic loss. The kind you don't just get over. And somebody called him a princess because he's pretending he's the victim. And he thinks that's, that's the injury. What? You're shitting us with that. Does any of you feel sorry for the BTK because he got caught? Or, or Ted Bundy, or, you know, I'm sorry, but we don't, Mr. Perry. That's why we can get information, and no one will help you with who's getting it. And then we hear you guys all have your little meeting, and trying to figure out how to make me fail. You know, the thing is, when you're mean, it pisses people off, and they tend to rant when they're pissed off. So we can get them from it. I have people that work on your on your little team. And don't listen, David, y'all. Quit going around saying she can't prove it. You you sit there and go, what is she going to do next? What is she going to do? You know what really matters is not what I'm going to do. It, what about the people that get that information from you and give it to me? I knew Mike Neely was drugged before anybody else said it. How is that? Who got that information and gave it to me? I knew Gene Mitchell, his attorney was going to change completely what he said to the media and make a completely different uh, argument in court that was bullshit. I, I knew that before he did it because I texted him and he said that. How did she know my legal argument before I made it? I know she knew because she texted me and said, don't say that. It's not true. It's not plausible. It's not even possible. Here's what happened because this is what the evidence says what happened. I look at evidence. I can read a crime scene. I read evidence. I, I grew up in law enforcement. It's not hard for me at all. It's very easy. It's like breathing. So, um, the, don't, you know, buff, that's who you need to worry about. Not me. Because they're the ones getting what you just said. They got the McNamara email. You horrified somebody. With when you told him what you were going to do to me, horrified him. And so we got it. You horrify people on a daily basis, so we get it. Ask Muffin Man. You got a guy named, his nickname is Muffin Man. You're the Weeble Wobbles. You wobble, but you don't fall down? Really? We think you're Jenga, and I'm the Jenga piece. Because only, you only get caught when you do the crime to me, right? You start pushing and pulling at me. Everything changes. It's never going to be the same again, by the way. It's never going to be. You have a new normal. And you did. That started the day you started doing this shit to me. Stuff you've done to a lot of people all your life. It changed when you started doing it to me. Why is that? Mr. Perry. You want everybody to go, oh, Mr. Perry. Uh, don't call him princess. 
because somebody's going to call his attorney and tell on t tell the teacher on us the bully got called a name the bully just beat the hell out of somebody and ruined their life forever it'll take years to try to get things back that they lost some never get it back we can't get lucky back and we're supposed to feel sorry for you because you want to play the victim and act all s I'm sad. I'm hurt. I got caught. Who's tailing on me? So we call you princess. And that's the crime? That's the hurt injury? You got, you're shitting us with that, right? I know the guy in Creek County told you that. You can dish it out, but you can't take it. And what she's dishing out is nothing. She's not taking your car. She's not trying to vandalize your car. She's not trying to cause a far car accident for you. She's not meeting with Hitman trying to figure out how to kill you. She's not going to your family and turning them against you. She didn't talk to your family at all. She didn't go anywhere you are to try to cause a conflict. She's not trying to take your home away. And you do that to her 24-7. And she calls you a name, and that's what you're upset about? You think yeah, that's what everybody else is going to be upset about? I'm sorry, it's not. You need to get a grip on reality. Because you're off your nut if you think other people feel sorry for you. You're not getting help, are you? When you call around and want to know who's catching your crime. I got to find out who's catching my crime and try to get them to stop, stop... Stop stopping my crime, damn it. I'm a God-fearing sex pervert. Don't you know that? Yeah. What did I tell you guys a long time ago? I know you've done this all your lives and gotten away with it. Not this time. Watch this. Look how much more we've gotten since then. We found out about the Weeble Wobble. We found out you're sex trafficking. And that you're sex trafficking. When you make delivery of a victim, you call that Papa John's. Your little code words y'all use. Rumpled still skin. Go into that club and see if you can get her say say the same the her real name. You call that rumpled still skin. Is uh is uh Rapunzel gonna let down her hair? Is she gonna give in now? No. Mr. Perry, it's been thirteen years. I've said no. I've lived in Oklahoma nine years, and the whole time I've been here, I said no. I've gone without food, electricity, any place to live, food and shelter. Because you like depriving women of food and shelter with intent to coerce. A lie. I've done without food, electricity, a place to live. And my answer is no. In fact, it's more no now than it was before. You did that to me. You're a terrorist. You enjoy terrorizing people. I don't negotiate with terrorists, Mr. Perry. You're a job for me. My job was to get you elected so you could talk to cops or they could talk to you. And you wouldn't get wise to it. Now we know you never would have gotten wise to it. But now the thing is you're in the public eye. And anybody in 13 years, how many have you talked to that you didn't know you were talking to a cop? Because as good as a sting op as I am, they're better. You talked to a female officer. And you know what she said? It's been about six years ago. She goes, Mr. Perry comes across as very charming, very wholesome, very naive. Like this nice little family and this nice little man. But the thing is, if you talk to him about certain subjects, the real Charles Perry comes out. And I could tell I was looking in the eyes of a serial killer. He's not that nice man. He's not naive. He's not kind. He's not wholesome. He's a monster. And he'll let it slip out. Here and there, he'll let it slip. I saw it. She goes, I wonder how many other people saw it and begin to question what he said or what he did. It seems off. It's way off. How many times have you done that? Because you can't remember anything. We have to repeat ourselves all the time for you. I bet you have no memory of that conversation at all. So no telling what you said to her. I think that is funny as hell. I think it's funny as hell. So how many did you talk to that work with us? And you don't have their names. They, uh, you know, 
you're you're not the injured party. You got called a name. Rightly so, after you blew up someone's life. Complete, you're a terrorist. When they call Bin Laden, you know, Bin Laden flies a plane into the World Trade Centers and kills, what, 3,000 people that day on 9-11? Our soldiers start hooking up the bombs. They got they had names on those bombs. Fuck you, up your ass, all this stuff. Because you hurt people in a way they'll never get over. You're hurting people in a way they'll never get over. It may not be on a, as a large scale of three thousand at one time. What dif what difference does it make? None to me. One person hurt is enough to be angry at you. One person. You terrorize one person. That one person matters to me. You don't. That one person matters to a lot of people. You don't. Our guy said to you when I'm, you know, she's sleeping in her fucking car. I don't even know what to say to this. When I use third person, by the way, I'm quoting someone else. Most people just know that. They don't have to be told. So... Uh, he goes the hardest thing for me to watch I don't want to watch it at all but they're making me watch this and the hardest thing for me to watch is Mr. Perry waddles to the next room to pee like the hobbit that he is and then waddles back to his nice warm bed Cynthia has to drive to a gas station and where I come from a man gives his chair up for a woman you don't treat him like that that's why she didn't like him and another guy said you know what I don't call my girlfriend's family at all or her friends there's boundaries there you don't cross and if I did it would be to find out what she wants for her birthday or for Christmas not get information on her car so I can take it away from her so that's why she doesn't like him nobody does that's why you have leaks her and we don't that's why I can get what you just said every fucking day all fucking day long and nobody will tell you how who what when who they don't want to help you with that. You're terrorizing me like this guy is. I don't want to hear your voice, see you. Please what, what God bless you, but please happened? leave me alone. Got, please leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops stop. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please, I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's no, why I'm no, here. No, just talk. Leave me alone. No, I will. You talk to me for two minutes no, and I'll leave you alone. No, damn it. I don't what, want to ever talk to you. What I don't ever want to hear your fucking sister. Okay, this guy. Mr. Perry... You're delusional. I feel nothing for you but deep, deep, deep disgust. You're seeing things in the privacy of my home or my hotel room <coughs> or sometimes even my car that I don't want you to see at all, much less take the wrong way. Or imagine that it means something, you know, why would you want, I mean, did you, did you think that the victims of Ted Bundy, you know, wanted to, thought he was hot and sexy? As he's killing them. Because you're killing parts of my life that are important to me. You're not important to me. You never were. You're a job. I'm sorry that you sit around and bullshit yourself all day. And get information I don't intend for you to have at all. Much less use it to feed a delusion. Sir. There's nothing real there at all for me. Nothing. Nothing. You're a job. I did my part. You turned it weird. You turned me into a victim. I was supposed to get you elected so cops could get to you. And they have. How many of them? When? What all did you say? You've all talked to them. You just didn't know that's who you were talking to. Every single one of you have talked to several of them. And you just had no fucking idea that's who you were talking to. And as good as I am at a sting up, they're better. So, uh, you know, uh, they've got stuff you don't even, I'm sure you've not even considered. So this guy, she's trying to explain to him, do you like having a camera in your face, sir? And instead of relating, going, no, actually, I don't. He's not getting her point at all. He has no understanding of what she's trying to say. It's just not clicking for him. It's going right over his head. He comes back at her with, I got pictures of you. I'm a stalker and I have pictures of you. Which is creepy. That's probably creeping her out even more. And, um, 
that's not what she's trying to say. What she's trying to say is we don't like this. Your conduct is it's offensive. Stalking is a felony, Mr. Perry. Peeping is a felony. It's inappropriate and offensive. Hacking is a felony. Forcing yourself on a woman that does not like you is a felony. If you're in a bar, they kick you out. If you're in a bar and you act like he's acting and you act towards a woman, they will kick your ass out in two seconds. They do not put that up with that in a bar. Why they put up with it in, uh, you know, every, Tulsa police puts up with it and constables putting up with it and, other, you know, they're putting up with it. But if you're in a bar, they kick your ass out. They put up with it in your church, clearly. In a bar, they will, they'll kick you out. They will not, you get out. They got bouncers and they'll throw your ass out. I've seen it. I've seen it a lot. It's offensive. It's immoral. It's illegal for a reason. Normal people do not like it when you do that. So don't do things people don't like and then sit around and go, Why doesn't she like me? Why? I'm a victim. I'm going to take her car. Did she want me? Oh my God. No. That's not how that works. That's not how that works at all. Uh, gosh, everybody. I'm going to call Mr. Perry a name. Everybody make sure you call Mark and tell him. Tell the teacher. The bully got called a name. I'm sure everybody will go get you a tissue, Mr. Perry. Why don't you call your mommy? I don't think anybody else gives a shit. In fact, we're all t really tired of hearing you whine about how you think you're somebody done me wrong. Song. I, my crime got caught. And then I got called an asshole because I was, did a crime that was mean. And caused somebody profound catastrophic loss. And I'm the victim. Nobody sees it that way. No one else sees it that way at all. That's why we can get information and you can't. I have people's names, your people's names. You don't have even one of ours, not one. Ask Calvin, bald, fat Calvin, your witch, Geppetto, Sonjay, your hacker, Blankenship, Desiree, Beverly, Kate, James, Reuben, Dickie, and Richard. Did they like us getting their names? I think long ago when you were threatening and bribing me and threatening me and bribing me, I said, I don't need your money. For a buy a lie. Here's the thing. That's illegal. You owe me a legit debt. Give me my money. The money you owe me. For raping me every day in the privacy of my home against my will. A thousand dollars a day you're using my body for your little pretend love life. And for a profit. And you don't get to do that you sick son of a bitch. Plus two thousand dollars a day for doing it without my consent. It's a very serious, vulgar crime. It is a felony. It's a felony. And you're not the victim because you got caught. You're the offender because you did it to begin with. Um, you live in pretend land. That's not, don't bother me with that anymore. Do not bother me with that ever fucking again. You little pretend life. Um, it's not real to me. Uh, so, I mean, pe you should hear people. He says they're a couple, yeah, and she won't have anything to do with him. And, and he keeps hoping she'll change her mind, yeah. For how long has it been? Nine years. Nine years? Oh, my God. What is wrong with him? Nine years? Dear God. That mental hospital. Butterfly net. I, I agree. I think everybody pretty much agrees on that. That's not in, on your payroll. People you're paying not to agree with that. Everyone else does agree with that. You just, you're getting on everybody's last nerve. So, when he said this was in 2020, after we found out Mike was drugged before anybody else said it. Jean Mitchell, how does she know I was going to change my legal argument? And what my legal argument was going to be before I even made it? She, I know she knew because she texted me and said, that argument's not plausible. How do we know those two very key major material facts in a murder of a cop in a first degree murder of a cop and the first degree attempted murder of Mike Neely who then you framed huh we knew he was drugged before anybody else said it then you start meeting with a hitman trying to figure out how to how to kill me I heard the recordings of Mr. Perry you, oh, you, need, you need to remember who it is uh, that you're talking to and don't go around telling people she can't prove it she can't prove it it's not really me that you need to worry about. It's the guys that are getting that information that you need to worry about, don't you think? You don't know who they are. They've made sure of that. They can get a whole lot more work done if you don't know who they are.
He can send 10, 10 different um, agents, detectives, undercovers to talk to you, and you won't have any idea that that's who you're talking to, and spread it out a couple of years, and then send another one a couple of years, right? Or a couple of months. He can, he can do that, because you have no idea who the fuck they are. He can do it, and you will never know what happened. You'll never get wise to that. Nobody would, especially not you. Um, so that's why they keep it uh, very hush-hush who they are. It's a need to know for a reason. To get, get a lot more intel when nobody knows who the hell they are. Nobody trusts Tulsa Police. Tulsa Police took my police report and gave it right to the offender. After that, that was done. We're done. We're fucking done with you. I filed subsequent to that another re police report alleging obstruction of justice, destruction of my evidence, perjury. They didn't do a shit. So there you blew chance number two to get trusted. Blew it. And then we got a dead lucky in on almost dead framed Mike. And nobody did anything. Y'all didn't hold the pr a press conference. And then go, our colleague is murdered. And there's some things that don't quite add up. So we decided to look into it. We got our guy from uh, First 48, Detective Jason White. We had him look at it. And Marcus Harper, we had them look at it. And they're looking at the evidence going, huh, this is awfully weird because we have a guy that was beat to death. Hit so hard back and forth, his head came off his body and he died of internal decapitation. And yet the offender has not a mark on him. And he's found unconscious, but not from being hit in the head like he was in a fight or something. But from being drugged. Well, how do you beat somebody to death, Jason White? Um, and not have a mark on you while you're sleeping. About to die a drug overdose. How do you do that? I want to hear you tell me how that's done. Because uh, we don't know. If you have some magic way that happened, you, you let us know. Mitchell tells everybody in the, in the, in the media our, my, the, the, that video where he's telling the police officer, I don't have a mark on me. And I can't remember anything because I was drugged and unconscious. Everybody, they found me like that. There's no injuries on me. So I don't believe you. I think you're full of crap. And the detective says, well, it appears like he was beat to death. Yeah, okay. But here's the thing, detective stupid. There's nothing on me that looks like I did it. You dumb son of a bitch. You put him in jail. He's lost his future. You don't get to do that. You don't get to. It's just, I'm, he's a cop. What the hell's the matter with you? Uh, we don't have any words for that. And I didn't see Jason step up and do a press conference and go, here, I looked at it. Here's what I see. Here's what I found. The evidence doesn't support the bullshit they're saying. It doesn't support it. I don't hear what people say. I want to see evidence. Right, Jason? Isn't that Detective 101? People lie, but the evidence doesn't. It doesn't lie. You got a guy with not a mark on him accused of beating someone to death. And it can't be done. It can't. If you know a way, I'd like to hear it. They didn't find a weapon, a murder weapon. And the murder weapon, if there was one, didn't get out and walk out of the room by itself. Mike was found unconscious. So he didn't get up and throw it out. And I mean, the people called. The people next door called and said something's wrong. They're fighting. Now all of a sudden it's dead quiet. Something's wrong. He didn't have time to run outside. Dump a weapon. Run back inside. Take a bunch of opioids and pass it on the floor. On top of Lucky. So that doesn't add up either. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, insane, the stuff we've heard. So yeah, Mitchell says, my client was drunk and he just accidentally fell on top of Lucky. What was Lucky doing laying on the floor that he could fall on him like that? With his butt? Cause internal decapitation with his butt? Strangulation with his butt? And, de uh, in, you know, blunt force trauma to the head with his butt while unconscious and in respiratory distress and dying of opioid overdose. Again, Jason, weigh in here. Tell us how that happened. I didn't see TPD step up for him. 
He's an Oklahoma policeman. So is Chief Miller. Chief Miller's kids and family and wife should be enjoying the benefits of having a loved one who died in the line of duty, not a drunken brawl. Right? It means something to have a badge. There's honor in it. There's the code of ethics, the commitment to relieve suffering caused by crime. When you sign up to be a cop and you agree to live at a higher moral standard than everyone else because you're the authority and you've been given a gift, it's been bestowed upon you by God and you have thrown it in his face and spit on it when you get corrupt. That's what you just did. And this is cop family. And cop family doesn't leave one behind. It's just not what you do. It's unimaginable. Martin Luther King Jr. said an injustice for one is an injustice for all. Because if they did it to him, they can do it to you. And my guess is that's been threatened. I'm thinking about... Uh, I'm not... Here's the thing about my faith in God. Is my faith in God is not something I go around talking to a bunch of people about. It's not something I just go around like I'm working in a strip club for six years where by the way I'm able to get a lot of evidence no one else has um, we're very proud of the fact that we've been able to get evidence no one else has and Mr. Perry seems oblivious to what that means he thinks he can get a date with me can you imagine what kind of delusion one must be in to think that I mean you really gotta be a sick puppy in some deep, deep, deep doo-doo land delusion, delusion to think you could get a date with me after I've worked this hard and made this many sacrifices to get th more evidence, to be able to say we have more evidence than anybody else has ever gotten before. We have more. Okay, working in a strip club did that. And you can go ask anybody I danced with. Religion was not something I talked about. The church ladies that come in, I might talk about it with them, but not to the other people in there, and never never any other time, and never any other people in there. I just That's just not something I do. I don't go around preaching to people. But this is a different situation because these boys are church boys. Mr. Perry's a church deacon. Mr. Powell goes to church every Sunday, right? Aren't you guys South Crest Baptist? You know, I, I don't know what the hell's wrong with that church. They're teaching some gospel that's not the gospel I've read. You know, you don't oppress the poor and women and children and take food and deprive, hoping to make them lie for you. You don't go into court and bear false witness intentionally and just hope nobody finds out and they don't act like you're the victim when somebody tells on you or somebody finds out. Uh, you don't lie, you don't cheat, you don't steal, you don't kill. You took a life. So, I will, I will tell you this. We know uh, quite a bit more about that than we, I'm going to put out right now. I don't have the evidence. The guys do. So, when you're sitting around going, what is she going to do next? I wish I knew what she was going to do. Actually, the more important question for you to ask is, what are the guys going to do? Because they're the ones getting all this crap from you and giving it to me. So, that's really what you should worry about. Am I talking to you and you're understanding me like Neil here? Like his, you know, what's it feel like to have a camera in your face, Neil? Oh, you know, you know the picture, your sister? I have pictures of her, too. The one that puts scratches on your arm, you wait me to get the pictures of you. That has the scratches on your arm, your sister, like, and, and, and you know this how? Because my guess is that was none of your business. Uh-huh doesn't get what she's saying at all. He has no idea what she's saying. He doesn't get the point. He went right over his head. And then he starts threatening the same thing Mr. Perry does to me every day. I'm going to get you. I'm going to make you go back. I'm going to take you. I'm going to force you to go back. I'm going to get you. Who's telling on me? Is it David? Is David telling Putin? And Putin's telling you? Is it Medicare? Is it your mom and dad? Who's telling on me? I want to talk. My whole day's like that. 
Um, there's been a couple of emails that I sent out, and I didn't check them before I sent them out. And you can see where he's typed over my typing, because it's a word that doesn't make any sense with the rest of the sentence. And I'm like, oh, my God. When today was finger, what the fuck is, is he typing finger in my emails for? I don't even want to know the answer to that. And hearing. So I went and looked at it after. I'm going to start leaving that shit like it is. And I'll send it out. And then I'll fix it after. And let's start seeing exactly how many words Mr. Perry's typing in my emails. That's where he'll type in these names. He'll, is it Jim? He's always a Jim. I mean, daily. Is it Jim? I'm like, Jim. Why do you think it's Jim? Does Jim make sense? Because anybody that makes sense you think is a leak. Whether they are or not, I'm not told that. I'm repeating myself again. Okay, it's like this. How does this make you feel? That put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the Scratches? You want, I got scratches. Sure I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep hanging outside of it. Get the road. Dude. I'm he just typed in my other phone. Is it your family? I'm not told that. I'm repeating myself again. Who cares? Why'd you do it to begin with? Don't worry about who told on you. We want to know why did you do it to begin with? I promise you, you're gonna get yours and you're gonna I don't get give a fuck. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're gonna you can, fight is that a fucking threat? army. Gonna I don't give a fuck. How does this make you feel? Huh? You're filming my father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you is feel? Is that the one that put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the Scratches? You want, I got scratches. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep hanging outside of it. And here's the deal with, you're going to bother us with a repeat. you got to say it over and over and over. And I, well, I don't get blah, blah. He doesn't have any idea what you just said. He starts talking about her clothes. I'm sorry, nobody asked you about her clothes, did they? You weren't asked. No one cares what you think. What'd she say? Act like you understand what she, what she said. She said, leave me alone. You guys are exactly the same, both you and Neil. That's okay. I don't care. Leave you me alone. You want. I don't want proof of this. Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes and I'll leave you alone. Oh, my God. It's too damn early for this shit. Leave me alone. How do you dress like this? What? what are you like a prostitute? I'm curious. Sir, what, please what leave. Your, that's okay. I don't care. Leave you me alone. You want. I don't want proof of this. Please that's leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes and I'll leave you alone. Oh, my God. It's too damn early for this shit. Right. Leave me alone. How do you dress like this? What? what are you like a prostitute? I'm curious. Sir, what, please what leave. That's okay. I don't care. Leave me alone. I don't want proof of this. See, normal people are glad when I'm okay. And they wish you'd just stop this. That's why we can get names and you can't. Are you going before Judge Parker? What are you telling Judge Parker? I, that's what, I mean, we're, we're just baffled by what you're doing, Mr. Perry. All this illegal shit. And then every day you get caught, and most people by now would have the good sense to stop. Not you. Is it your family? Who's still on me? Is it your mom? Is it Jim? Who's still on me? I want to talk. I bet you do. Just, just talk to me for two minutes. First, let me say that I'm happy that the lady in this video is okay. Second, let me break down what rape culture is. Rape culture is the fact that that man felt that he was entitled to some of this woman's time just because he said, let me talk to you for two minutes. Doesn't matter if it's two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes. If she said no, no means no. Rape culture is the comments that she has on her video about how she should have just spoke to him or dressed differently. Rape culture is me taking the heat for calling out other men for their terrible behavior. Rape culture is trying to explain stuff as... If it's illegal, people don't like it when you do that. I don't care what Judge Parker wants to see. Our judge wants to see your schedule and how you've spent every minute of every hour of every day. Because chances are high, you're not going to be able to prove you're doing anything but exactly what I've said. And how is it that I know that? Who all is getting that information from you to me? Name one guy. Name one guy. Ask Calvin and Sanjay to help you. 
oh, it's just locker room talk. No, it's not locker room talk. Talk, you should talk the same way wherever you are. We all know that rape is not about sex, it's about power. So for you to force yourself on somebody, even if you're just talking to them, is disgusting, dude. Leave me alone! Leave me alone! I don't want rape for this. Please leave me alone. I don't! Hey, man. Leave women the fuck alone. Leave me alone. I don't want proof for this. Please leave me alone. Hey, men. Leave women the fuck alone. When they're in public, when they're doing anything, you don't have the right to their attention. You don't have the right to step into their personal space. You don't have the right to them. Especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to. But even when they're not, unless a woman is giving you enthusiastic and continuous body language and signs that she wants to talk to your ugly dumb ass then leave her the fuck alone find a date a different way okay it's not clever it's not cool it's not cute it's garbage it's absolute garbage behavior and you're a garbage person if you do it i don't care if it's in public it doesn't fucking matter you don't have the right to her and you need to leave her alone and this is bacon Okay, and maybe our guys have talked to Judge Parker too. If there's a corruption case, and they're trying to find out what's going on, how many people are doing things against their will? How many people are doing things because they're getting paid and they're fine with it, as long as they get paid? How many people have been threatened into doing what they're doing? So I pro promise you, they've talked to her. She didn't know it. They know exactly what's going on, Mr. Perry. So... When you get called the name and everybody calls Mark Mark, she called him Princess. Forgive us if we're not tolerant of your whining. Were we tolerant? You know, every, they made uh, the Secret Service became very upset with John Hinckley Jr., who also sat around, watched TV, and pretended he had a love life with Jodie Foster. And he killed, tried to kill the president shot up a bunch of people and he was tackled by the secret service and they were very angry to find that when they brought him in for questioning his complaint was that they hurt him when they tackled him and kept him from killing more people and that's all that mattered to him he couldn't give two fucks about all the people he just shot all the lives he just devastated he was about to do more that didn't matter all that mattered to him is, you hurt me when you tackled me. And not no fucks were given. And they're not given for you either. And that, sir, is why we can quote you all day, every day. We know names of your people. And no one will tell you shit about our guys. No one will help you. Everybody fucking hates you. And you need to get that, and you don't. Why is that? Most people don't have to be told. When you do something illegal, you're doing something people are very offended by. It's inappropriate. Your conduct is disgusting. And you don't care about that. You just want to know who told. And why don't people feel sorry for you? Why won't they help you with the name? Everybody's sick and tired of it. You're an imposition and a burden. Everybody really cannot wait until you're just fucking gone. So we don't have problems getting information and quoting you every day, all day long. And nobody will help you. Because you're hated. Everybody would like for you to stop. So what I said to you when you're offering me threats and bribes and threats and bribes and threats and bribes is no. You give it back what you took. Legitimate owed debt. Give that back and get the fuck out. Don't, I'm not going to lie for you. Nobody's going to lie for you. I'm not going to lie for you. Give it back and get out or they'll make your life much, much worse. So look how much more we've gotten since the first time I said that. Are you getting what you want doing what you're doing? Is it working out okay for you? Doing what you're doing? Sitting on your fat, lazy ass, perverting around all day? Making one problem after another after another? And then expecting everybody to feel sorry for you when you get caught. Or somebody calls you a name because they're pissed about it. It's a normal reaction to an abnormal situation, don't you think? Mark? 
supposed to call Mark if she if anybody calls his client a name. I about fell out of my chair when I heard that. I go, you are shitting me with that, right? What he's done is horrific. And he got caught. And people are mad. And so they say, call him a name. He's a bully. And that's the problem? Wow. Wow. Mr. Perry, if you don't get that living hell beat out of you in prison, I, you're, it's lucky for you. It's lucky for you, if that's how you act. I, I mean, your, your attorney's truly going to have to make special arrangements for you. Because if you act like that in prison, do, do that one time. Do that one time, Mr. Perry. You're the peeper. My guys can prove that. We quote what you say every day. We're naming your people. You forget who it is you're talking to when you threaten me with jail again. All day, ever since I got home from the first false arrest, that's all he does all the time. I'm going to have you arrested. I'm going to take your car. I'm going to take your home. I'm going to starve you until you lie. Call me. I want to talk to you. Is it Jim? Who's selling on me? All fucking day, all, every day, all day long. I'm like, oh. I try to get something done when you have to do that all day. You're trying to type something. I mean, everybody saw what Mr. Perry typed in my phone, in my uh, email, in my phone. Everybody could see it. I'm typing up somebody's conversation that the cops are playing for me. He's typing some, uh, some other word in it. Can you imagine you have to deal with that all day long and read every little thing and see if he fucked something up? Made it say something different than you intended to say? He does it all the time, all day long. Mr. Perry... In your court, in your criminal case that we're building against you, you absolutely will have to account for every minute and every day of your time. Because my guys can prove that what you're doing is bullshit, criminal, sicko, twisted, nasty, vulgar shit 24-7. You don't go five minutes, you're not committing a crime. So if Parker won't make you do it, our guy will. And then she's going to look bad because she failed. There's that. I'm just laying it out. That's how that's going to be. So people don't like your conduct. It's offensive and appropriate. It's rape. You don't get to watch me in my house and get away with it. Not this time. And you're not. If I'm quoting what you just said, what makes you think you're getting away with shit? If you have to ask who told on me, you're not getting away with anything. Delusional. Look, at this is how everybody else sees you. That's okay. I don't care. Leave me alone. I don't want proof of this. Please leave me alone. Hey, men. Leave women the fuck alone. When they're in public, when they're doing anything, you don't have the right to their attention. You don't have the right to step into their personal space. You don't have the right to them. Especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to. But even when they're not, unless a woman is giving you enthusiastic and con continuous body language and signs that she wants to talk to your ugly dumbass, then leave her the fuck alone. Find a date a different way. Okay? It's not clever. It's not cool. It's not cute. It's garbage. It's absolute garbage behavior. And you're a garbage person if you do it. I don't care if it's in public. It doesn't fucking matter. You don't have the right to her, and you need to leave her alone. And this is Bacon. That's okay. We all got rejected. We all moved on. Nothing more pathetic than a bitch who can't move on. That's a quote from Burn Notice. Nothing more pathetic than a bitch who can't move on. Everybody gets rejected, and everyone else can move on, and you just can't keep up. You're below par. You're inept and you're incompetent, and that is not our problem. You need to see a doctor. They have behavioralists that teach you how to behave. You're supposed to be a dignitary. You can't even keep up with normal people. High school kids, get over it and move on. You can't even keep up with a high school kid. It's pathetic. All right, so I'm going to say this for any judge, any prosecutor, any district attorney, any cop looking into this matter because Mr. Perry runs around trying to pretend he's the victim. You better know all your facts. You better know what I know. 
if I'm naming his people and I'm quoting him every day and we find out what he's going to do to me before he does it over and over and over, like the McNamara, it started with the McNamara email, he's going to false arrest me and then he did. You better know what I know because my guy's going to make you look bad if you don't. But that's a promise. That's not a threat. I'm telling you, that's just what's going to happen. That's just what they're going to do. Kind of like I said, they're cops. They stop crime. That tends to make a criminal's life living hell, don't you think? That's their job. They're very good at it. So if you, uh, if you, I said, give back what you, I don't want your byline money. I want the money you owe me. Give back what you took and get the fuck out of my life. And I never want to hear from you again. Or my guys will make your life a living hell. And so, how much more evidence did we get from that time to this time? And you don't have one of their names, and you have, can't quote one of their meetings. We quote you guys every fucking day. Make sure you call Mark if his client is called a name. Tell teacher if the bully gets called a name. Oh my god. Wow. And that's why they call you princess right there. Do that in jail. Mr. Perry. Do that in jail. Watch how that turns out. That is going to be something. They're going to have to put you in solitary for the rest of your life. You act like that in jail. Um, so we got this today. All this. Every time Charles contact, contacts me or peeps on me or causes a problem for me, we get more. And more. And more. And more. Right, Mr. Perry? Isn't that what you want, though? That's what you want. You don't do the same thing for 10 years every day if that's not if you're not getting the results you want. You want to help us catch? You think you're going to get a deal or what? You know, I don't think so. I don't think even that will work for you. Look at this. You talk to undercovers. We got that documented today. Because the more you contact me and drag this out and break me in the privacy of my home, the more we get. It's not me. What's she going to do next? I wish I knew what she's going to do. I'm not the one you need to worry about. What you need to worry about is the guys that tell me you said that. Poke and peep. You need to do something else with your day. Pottery class or something. Finger painting class. I think you need finger painting class. All this stuff today we got. We got one we got to get her back to Texas so we can do more to hurt her. We sold her to the realtor in Houston. We can't make Papa John's on this one. Yeehaw, we're God-fearing sex weirdos. Go to church every Sunday and go home and watch child porn. Don't ya? Yep. Real good Christians. I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing, and I'm faithful to reward my people for the suffering you're causing and make an everlasting covenant with them. Martin Luther King Jr. said, an injustice for one is an injustice for all because if he does it to one and gets away with it, he'll do it to you too. It's like Russian roulette. Isn't it? You're going to do it to one person, you'll do it to anybody. If you'll go in court and lie under oath over and over and over, you'll lie to anybody, anywhere, at any time for any reason. Because in court, it matters a little more. You can go to jail for that. It's different than when you lie to your wife about being why you're in Oklahoma all the time. So, maybe under oath, Mr. Perry, tell Judge Parker, why, in front of your wife, why you're in uh, Oklahoma all the time and what you do with your day. Because we're going to tell her. When you get charged with a crime, there's going to be a trial. So we'll tell her during your trial. Don't you think that's going to matter then? It may be need to matter now. So Judge Parker doesn't look bad then. Don't you think? Don't you think, sir? Yep. We're going to call Mark and let him know when he's called a name. This was the McNamara email, and you don't even still know what this means that we have this, do you? Who was horrified by what you told them you were going to do to me? They knew it was illegal. You knew we had this. You did it anyway. You proved out that recording, didn't you? This is very little of that recording. It's very little of it. It's just the main crux. He's going to false arrest me and try to coerce me to lie he got caught stalking it's a lot worse than that a whole lot worse than that don't ask what I can prove I'm really not the one you need to worry about it's the guys that get all this this thing they have the actual recording that goes with this right here 
Don't you think they're the ones? What are they going to do next? That's what you need to worry about. You can't name one of them, Calvin. Can you? Nope. The guys that have that actual recording right there. Lucius. David. So on the murder of Chief Miller, we understand that there was a meeting and y'all all decided you're going to kill him. And everyone knew about it except for Matt Powell. Matt Powell was the only one that had no idea what you were going to do. But the problem with Matt Powell is he's done a lot of accessory after the fact. And the criminal acts to cover all that up. So he's going to have to account to that in the criminal case. Don't you think it's important that Judge Parker know about that? And look into that. Get the facts. These are material facts. It's going to be bad if they come out in another court later and you just look bad. It matters now. It matters right now. So I don't know what court there was. It was a Judge Parker. They won't tell me some of this stuff because they want to deal with it in the criminal case. And they want me out of it. Something about a moratorium. He just said, type up the word mor moratorium and told them you got that from us. And that's all I want you to know about right now. Is that Judge Parker's court? See, you better know what I know. At least what I know. And the guys who are helping me know a whole lot more than that. Because material facts are going to matter then. So they better matter now. Because there's a thing called due diligence. Get the facts. There's a whole different thing going on in Lubbock. Mr. Perry lives two different lives. He has got a Lubbock life and he's got a pretend life in Oklahoma. Where he spends most of his time sitting on his fat lazy ass committing criminal acts 24-7. And he can't stop himself. And he can't understand what it means that we have all this. And why. And that we have names and he can't get one. Not even one. Ten years into this. And that we quote him every day and he's not quoted us once. Ten years into this. So you had a guy that said uh, they've had ten years. Six years in a strip club. Not one slip up. They had six years to get that girl to at least slip up. Make a mistake. But they're stupid. They send these people in that say something weird to her and make her uncomfortable. Or they're mean to her and they bully her f for them. And so she she won't have anything to do with you. She walks off. Or if you're not buying something from her, she walks off. Once she cuts off the conversation because you made it weird. Now she knows that you sent that person. Because you were either weird or you were mean to her. Or you asked a question that only Charles would want to know because he's going to use the information to hurt you or hurt her, he said. Um, or, you, or you're cheap like he is. Then, you know, welfare like they are. Then uh, you end the conversation and you end it all chance of getting her to make even a mistake and slip up. They had six years to send a couple of guys in who might be kind of good at a sting op. Who could gain her trust and let her guard get down. Give her money. Let her relax. Let her have a good time. And that's when people slip up. And they don't do that. Then they had a second chance. He was back in there for a little while. And they fucked it up again. So I don't think they even want to know. Then she wants to write. So her interactions are limited. She's working at home. And they fuck that up. And they have her door dashing. And she's picking up food. From restaurants, interacting with all kinds of people and delivering it to their people who know what they're doing. And I have no way to pinpoint if the information is coming through that way, through who, which one of those people she interacted with told her. We have no way to know, and there's so many people. Had they let her do what she wanted to do and write at home, her interactions with other people are going to be much more limited. Right? She's working at home. She's doing her personal, her interactions with them be personal stuff. The grocery store or something. Instead of in and out of restaurants and in and out of people's homes or at, to their door or whatever. Where any kind of information could be passed on in any form and we would never know. So, I can't, I can't pinpoint it if that's it. Well, we change it all the time too. We change it all the time. That way nobody can find it. I can't find anything other than my secured phone. You sit there and watch me talking on. Any other way we might share information, you're not going to find it because they change it up all the time. And that's why you don't know who they are. We're better at this 
and we have more evidence than anybody's gotten before. You can't name one name. We also make people happy, not sad. You make people sad and scared and stressed out and anxious and angry. Hurt and angry. And everybody's really tired of feeling that way. Mr. Perry, you are not the injured party because you got told on. Why'd you do it to begin with? Why in the fuck did you do that to begin with? You're the net, you're a Netflix special waiting to happen. One of those criminology interviews. Why in the fuck would anyone do that to another person? If it's illegal, people don't like it when you do that. They don't like it, and they don't like you when you do it. And nobody should have to tell you this. You should know. Most people don't have to be told. You've been told over and over and over, and it's just not clicking for you, is it? Mr. Warman, some of your own people said, what are we going to do with the little retard? Because he's making a mess for everybody. Your people said that. I told the teacher. Now what are you going to do, Mark? I didn't say it. Your guy said it. My guy, my guy has the recording of it. But maybe you ought to take it uh, a little more seriously that your client is pissing everybody off. We don't have a problem getting information. You guys do. Nobody will tell you shit, will they? How many calls have you made? You get, any, you get a name? Even one? Mr. Perry, people are offended by you. They're not offended that you got call, called a name. They're not offended that you got caught. They're not offended that you got told on. They're offended that you did it to begin with. And you need to get that, and you don't. I'm not sure you ever will. I, I, I'm not sure that, you, that somebody can't explain it to you over and over, and you just will never get it. I think that wire is just not in your head. Like it is for everybody else. And you can't keep up with everybody else. You're inept. You're subpar. You're incompetent. But you, you're very smart knowing that what you're doing is indeed a crime. Because you want everybody to lie. You think you're owed a lie. And that's all we need to integrate around any kind of insanity defense. Because there's two things required. You got to have a disease, a mind altering or impairing disease that you got. You have Huntington's disease, we found out, because you piss people off being an asshole to me, taking things of mine that don't belong to you. And you have to not know it's a crime, and you do know it's a crime. You just want people not to talk about it. Yeah, well, why'd you do it to begin with? You need to control yourself, pathetic. Like everybody else can do. So we got all that uh, today. And uh, that's Bible. This is uh, any judge. Any judge, anybody in law enforcement. There's a thing called reap what you sow, karma. You're going to get back what you put out, law of compensation. Those are all kinds. That covers about three, four different religions right there. It doesn't matter the religion. Everybody believes. That you gonna you know you you be shitty to people you gonna you gonna end up in a pile of shit. You asked for it. A man's kindness brings blessings. We can get information. We can get your names of your people. His cruelty will be his downfall, and nobody will help you. Will they? Yeah, I told you not this time, didn't I? So we got uh. What else did we get? We got all this today. You wanted to make a problem with my car again, did you, Calvin? Oh, but she's got roadside assistance. So we had our guy, she was going to flag our guy down. He was going to help her after we caused a problem with her car. She's got a roadside breakdown. And then, you know, he's going to do this to her and that to her and get the car away from her. And we had to get her, car, get, her, get her a plane ticket and get her out of Oklahoma because she's messing up our crime. I am very good at what I do, Calvin. I'm sorry you want to do the crime. I'm not sorry we caught you. I'm very proud of that. I'm Chief Hall's granddaughter, criminal. Nice to meet you. I didn't come here to pick a fight with you. I came here to get away from one. And just hang out with my family. But when you picked the fight with me, everything changed, Calvin, didn't it? Everything changed. We have more than anybody else has. But when you sit around and worry about what I'm going to do next, I would suggest... That it's not me you worry about. It's who got this from who got this from you and gave it to me. 
yeah, six years in a strip club and they couldn't get anything out of her at all. Guess what? I even told them, get a guy or two to come in and buy VIPs from me all the time and just sit and chat and don't make it weird and don't be a dick to me. Just have fun. Because when people are having fun, they let their guard down and they get relaxed and they start making mistakes. I won't. But just to make it a, be a challenge because I'm, you guys are a fucking yawn. Let's just do it to see if I can handle it and not slip up. Oh, no, we can't. She, we can't give her any money. We got to make sure she don't have no money. Okay, have it your way. See how that works out for you. Well, that's what the guy said. They fucked everything up. They've had all this time to get her to slip up and give a name or something. Something that we can use to try to find out who's helping her. And there's nothing. Because they send one guy in and says something mean to her. And another guy in says something weird to her. And another guy in that asks her a bunch of weird questions that no, only he would want, only Perry would want to know. But she's not going to answer those. I mean, here's my orange flag. I work for Charles Perry. I said something weird. That's how you'll know. Or I won't buy anything. That's how you'll know. Or I'll be an asshole to you. And that's how you'll know. Yeah, there's telltale signs. That's it. Either mean cheap or weirdo oh charles was here that guy works for charles <coughs> so i'm not gonna say much to say much to that one in fact I'll, I'll probably lie a lot um so you know we got that today because when charles contacts me we get more i said give it back and get the fuck out or he'll make your life a living hell and look how much more we've gotten since i said that since i said that we got sanjay's name Geppetto's name, Blankenship's name, Desiree's name. I mean, because you keep doing the crime to give us more to get, don't you? Yeah, if you're out with your family doing normal family things, normal people do, there's nothing to get. That's not a crime to do that. It's when you're sitting in Oklahoma planning to do something to my car again with Calvin, hoping to have your guy. Oh, but shit, she got roadside assistance. Yeah, a lot of insurance companies offer that now, don't they? Then we got uh, we got this one. Every time Charles contacts me and peeps on me, we get more. Every time he takes my money, we get more. Every day Mike Neely sits in jail and he's taking his future away, we get more. Because you piss good people off, normal people. You don't even know what that's like. Don't, nobody's pissed that you got caught and told on or called a name. Because everybody's mad at you for hurting people and ruining lives. You know, you go go tell your attorney, go tell your teacher. You got called a name, bully. Does he does he does he make sure everybody knows what you did to get called that name? Yeah, come on now, let's not be, you know, we get, get the princess syndrome here. Do that in jail. I'd love to see how that turns out. Do that princess act of yours in jail. When they arrest you, do that in jail. Let's see how that works out for you. Teacher, she called me a name. Oh my god. Wow. I'm the victim. Do that in jail. You got all this. All that, Mr. Perry. Oh, this is that one I already showed. Calvin's trying to find a way to do something to her car. This one. Misread the situation and wasted everybody's time. He he keeps saying she's hitting at stuff when he find when he's watching her in her privacy of her home do stuff against her will without her consent. He thinks that's a hint. And so we go check into it and it turns up nothing because it's not a hint. He's a delusional person. I could have said whack job, but we don't want everybody to go tell Mark. Go tell teacher. The bully got called a name. I mean, this is ridiculous, Mr. Perry. Um, so, we got all this. I mean, it's a lot. This is the one about ruling out entrapment. And then that Kirkendall. Kirkendall got it right. There's Here's the thing, Mr. Perry. There's this email, which looks like that's what you're doing. You're harassing her. And when she, compl when she tells on you, you're acting like you're the victim. And you're lying. In my courtroom, and I don't like that. 
So how about you leave her alone for a couple weeks so I can rule out entrapment and provocation? Because I can't see what's going on in Oklahoma, and there's five of you. There's you, Matt, Josh, Dave, Joe. Dave and Joe have hired what Calvin. Isn't Dave and Joe Cal um, uh, Calvin, Dave and Joe's guy? See, she doesn't even know all the people that work for you and for the, the other part of you. I mean, there's five of you. Some live in Texas, some here. And Dave and Joe and Calvin are buddies, aren't they? And Lucius. And Judy Parker over in Lubbock, Texas has no idea who they are, what they do all day. She can't account for their time. And they're not going to tell her. You think they're going to call out, hi, Judge Parker, over in Lubbock? I vandalized Cynthia's car today while she was asleep. You know how I know she's asleep? I peep. I'm peeping on her. So I know when she goes to sleep, so I can have my guy go over and poke a hole in her tire or her radiator hose and fuck with her car. So she has a breakdown on the side of the road, then I can have my guy go get the information off of it and have it towed. Now it's my car. Now she's on foot again, and I can give her a plane ticket and tell her to get out of Oklahoma. This is a rack. I mean, do you hear the ridiculous? When you're, when you're in a criminal trial, let's see how the jury likes all that. Just, I mean, I'm just saying that's what you're looking at. That's the reality of it. Don't you think? See what your kids think about that. Because I've had to sit and listen to it. It's not fun. Just have to sit and listen to that kind of shit all day long. So why don't you give us nothing else to get? That's my request. Please get off your lazy fat ass. And go be normal. And do things with Jordan and Matthew and your wife Jacqueline in Lubbock. Nobody invited you to Oklahoma. Nobody's picking a fight with y'all. So go do normal things. Normal people get a life. And get the fuck out of mine. And they won't, I won't, there's be nothing else to type up. Okay? We're all busy, Mr. Perry. My schedule's full. It's full. Gym, school, work. If you let me work, if I can go to work without being the victim of a crime every day, it's nice for me to be able to go to work. And then have money to go to the store and buy things. And not give you two, fuck, two, two thoughts. And not have to drop everything I'm doing in my busy life and type up what you just said about fucking with my car while I'm asleep and there's like four crimes five crimes I peeping vandalism I saw something on the news the other day a guy got charged with uh, malicious something he just he was vandalizing a car malicious uh, pff, now I can't remember what it was destruction or malicious vandalism or malicious something so there's a charge for for stuff like that, TPD. I mean, God, you, you know, okay, so I'm going to close with this because this is always on my mind every day. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I don't drink until this guy's home with his family. And Chief Miller's name is on the front door of the Manfred, Manfred Police Department. Actually, I want both of them. I would lie. I, I, I am requesting of Ty Buttram that he, in the city council in Manfred that the way that my granddad was honored and his name is on the front door of the police station where he served as chief, Chief Thompson and Chief Hall, both. They got a whole room in that police department honoring the police who served at Roswell Police Department in Roswell, New Mexico. And my granddad's name is big, huge, over the wall um, because he served. When you serve others, you make yourself indispensable. And, it, and, and, and people respect you. And that's what that's what Jesus did, and that's what he said, serve others. Be a service to other people. And my granddad was a public servant. And he says in one of his election brochures, the public, the taxpayers are our bosses. We work for them. And he truly believed that. And he served. And then when he died, he's honored. He was honored before he died at the police department. But he was honored after he died in that my grandmother got hundreds of letters from people he helped thanking her and you know people people are very quick to write a letter when they're angry very quick to email off you know a letter to whoever a strongly worded letter to target because the cashier blah blah or, or or you call customer service or you know you're at a restaurant and the waitress or waiter sucked and the or the food's bad or whatever boy how do you raise your hand and you want the manager and oh, i want to blah blah how many times do you call the manager over? I, I, I've done this a couple of times. Actually, I did it at Target one day about a year ago. 
uh, it was weird because uh, I walked up and two people, um, two people came up and said, may I help you? Is there anything you need? And I was like, wow, I had ordered things online and I was at the desk to pick it up. And while I was, one person went and got it. And while I was waiting, two more people asked if they could help me. And I was, uh, I was so uh, pleasantly surprised that they were that helpful. So the third person that asked me, I looked at the girl and I said, oh my gosh, how nice of you. And I said, do you mind getting a manager for me? And her, and her face turned white. And you could tell her stomach went up into her throat. And I went, oh my God, sweetheart, I'm not upset. I, I have a compliment actually. And she, I could tell that she thought I was going to complain. And, and she was upset. You could visibly nervous and upset by my request to see a manager because normally that's a negative thing and I had to calm her down like I felt terrible uh you could just see her just the look on her face was sheer terror of oh my god she wants the manager what did I do wrong and and I was like oh sweetheart don't worry um I have a compliment don't don't be upset and I normally didn't I wanted to kind of surprise her her and the other girl that asked me if I wanted help, but um, she got, because she got so, that's normally such a negative experience, um, people are not really quick enough to compliment as much as they are to say something critical when they're pissed off. Mr. Perry, remember that. You're pissing people off all the time. So people rant when they're mad. So we don't have a hard time getting information at all. A man's kindness brings blessings. His cruelty brings his downfall. And I'm the Jenga piece, sir. There's this right here. I walk. I walk. I, I. I mean, I. This. This thing that you guys say, where we wobbles and we don't fall down, is hysterical. I mean, with the daycare word y'all use, who comes up with that stuff? This says in here, it's like you guys are Jenga, and you don't know that. And every time I'm the Jenga piece, and every time you push and pull and bully me, you bully everybody. This is criminal activity. It's organized crime. It's RICO Act stuff. It's it's not hard. And you push and pull me. Things changed forever for you, didn't they? Didn't they? And they'll never be the same again. So, anyway, when the manager comes with Target, I'm telling her, I actually did not call you because I'm pissed. I'm sorry, that's always why you're called. I could tell by the look on her face. That's always why people ask for a manager. I'm, that's not the case right now. I wanted to compliment you because I had three people ask to help me. It's very unusual. Usually you're standing around waiting for somebody to get to you. To give 10 minutes. If you can get some help in 10 minutes, you're doing good. I walked in and three people offered to help me. And that, that thank you for the good customer service. And um, I want to I want to compliment this one and this one and point it to the I go I don't know their names this one this one that helped me that they they're doing a great job they're very professional so um, my granny got a lot of letters when my granddad died I would like hang on look at all the wrecks Mr Perry caused in my car if I can take her car away then she'll call me no. You don't get to be the villain and the hero. You're either the villain or you're the hero. You make a problem, you're the villain. And that's the way that is. You shouldn't be upset that you're getting told on. Everybody's really upset as to why you did it to begin with, sir. Because we don't do that. Normal people don't act like that. We're busy. We have a full schedule of work, school, family, friends, church, you know, gym class. There's just no time. So why do you have time? To have a little meeting. Talk to your hitman. To have your little meeting. Who can we get to vandalize her car today? When she's asleep. Yeah, we hear all that, Calvin. See how my grandest name is right here? Right here. I would like to see Chief Miller's and... Officer Neely's on the front door of Manfro Police Department. I would like to see his family uh, get the benefits of an officer who's murdered or killed in the line of duty. And I'd like to see Mike Neely go home to his family. Because you can't beat someone to death and look like this. Right there. 
back and forth, the medical examiner said, back and forth, right, left, right, left, beat, 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 until his head came off his body and he died of internal decapitation. I'm blunt force trauma to the head, and Mr. Neely's hands look like that. This one is red and swollen because it's got an IV needle in it. Right hand is probably what he hits with first. And yet, it's only red and swollen. And I'm getting that from the arrest report. I can look at it and see that myself because I'm not blind. Look at that. Beat. Right. Left. Back. And forth. So hard. His head came off his body and he died and officer Neely's hand looks like that and he's found unconscious and in respiratory distress and not a mark on his head not a bump on his head no concussion but overdosed with opioids and he's gonna die he was gonna die they saved him by giving him Narcan. Or he would have. Who did that to him? Who gave him the Narcan? Um, who picked him up off the bed and threw him on top of Lucky? Face first. So that his body was hiding Lucky's face. And he was face down. Whoever killed him didn't want to see what he did. He didn't want to look at their faces. He was ash at least ashamed a little at what he had just done. Which one was it? Was it Calvin, David, Joe? Who did that? Who did that to them? We know it wasn't Charles. Charles was too girl. Go tell Mark. Tell the teacher we bullied him. Uh, we didn't bully him. He's a killing cops. We reacted normally to an abnormal situation. So, but he hires people. He hired a hitman to talk to, to kill me. Didn't he, Mr. Perry? Shut up. I was getting sick. I texted the hitman. Are you giving me arsenic? And he said yes. Then he says, let your life fade away. And then I tell him I want the stalking to end without death and destruction. He said, I can't promise that. Why say that? Why the fuck would you say something like that? That's hitman number one. The brick thrown at me on the highways. Brick hitman number two. And then after that, there was the, I want to give her, let's, let's make a medical emergency at her work and, and say this guy's, in, you know, down and she needs to help and she'll help. And then we'll say he's got a virus. You got to take this shot. And we heard your hitman say, what do I do if she won't take the shot? Tell her she'll die if she doesn't take the top shot. She'll get the virus that guy has. Because she helped him. And then we'll say to her family, she just had an unfortunate allergic reaction to the shot. They'll be okay with that. She'll look like a hero. And they won't. I heard that recording. Your family's going to have to listen to it too in court. So, I mean, you guys have these meetings once a week about getting a hitman. Why do you want to kill me? Oh, oh gosh, maybe I'm telling the truth. And the truth is inconvenient for you, isn't it? You're seeing things happen you've never seen before, right? That's dated March 2020. He was drugged. He didn't do it. Oh shit, May. I said it before anybody else said it. Who gave that information to me? Because that's who you need to worry about. Not what I'm doing next, what they're doing next. What are they doing next? What are they looking into next, Mr. Perry? What are you giving them to get? Calvin. I mean, y'all just are the, it's the gift that keeps on giving, aren't you? There's the arrest report. No injuries on him at all, but a red swollen right hand. And you can't hit somebody back and forth like that and not have an injured both hands mr perry listen it's by the way that you keep trying to communicate with me it's clear that you think i want to hear it you think i care what you think and nobody understands why the hell you think that no one understands why the fuck you think that you got a serious deep delusion thing going on and as much as we quote you and get names of your people when you are told get the fuck out of my life you're really showing your delusion that you think you have a choice it's, it's interesting. Your delusion is just popping out all over the place. Because you don't have a choice. You're not in compliance with the law. You're violating me. You're making people pissed off. And you're getting told on. Nothing else happens but you get told on. 
We quoted you all fucking day long, didn't we? You can't get even one name of my guys or a quote one meeting. We quote you every day, all day long. And you think you have a choice when you're told to stop. Doesn't get any more delusional than you, Mr. Perry. Okay, so this is what Gene Mitchell says. That the video can prove his client innocent. But then, what he actually said in court is my client was drunk and he fell unlucky. And with his ass, caused blunt force trauma to the head, internal decapitation and strangulation. And I was like, oh my god. So I texted him before and said, that's not plausible. You need to talk with me. I'll tell you what happened. Because I read the evidence. And I know that he was drugged. I told the Florida State's attorney. That was in March. I didn't talk to Gene until October. But the trial wasn't until March of the next year. And now he's, he could ask me in a deposition, how'd you know that? But he didn't. Because he was too busy asking questions relevant to Mr. Perry's lie that he's being harassed every time he gets told on. What, uh, what he should have said is, is, he's asking now, how does she know my legal argument before I made it? And how do I know he's asking those questions, Mr. Perry? And the fact that we know that, and we're naming your people, you think you have a choice when you're told to stop? And you think we don't, we're not supposed to call you delusional? Really? Wow. Okay. That kind, that thing, that slow of yours, mental slow problem of yours, that's how we get information because it's very irritating for everyone else to have to deal with it. We'd like you to stop making us deal with it. Nobody invited you to Oklahoma, sir. Nobody invited you to Oklahoma. I came to Oklahoma to be with my family and never have to hear what you think again. When you had me arrested and you guys wanted me to lie, I said, I'm not going to lie. I'll just stay quiet, though, but Mr. Perry can never contact me again. And what part of that did you not understand, sir? You gave your word you would never contact me again. You gave your word you would love Jackie, be loyal to her, honor her, respect her. You think you're honoring her, chasing a woman in another state who doesn't even like you? You think it's going to honor her for her to have to sit and listen to the same recordings I have? During a criminal trial, sir? Would you like to give her some more to have to sit there and listen to? And explain away and apologize for I mean, that's just the way it is. That's just what they're going to do. Because they're not going to put up with your crime. Everybody else can. We're not going to. We've worked too long and too hard. Sir. I'm not going to lie for you. I've done, I've lived in hell. I've never had such horrible stress in my life. As I've had over the past six, six, seven months. Since you're trying to deprive me of food and shelter to coerce a lie. And I still won't lie, will I? I fucking hate your guts. You don't fucking matter. I matter. We can get information and you can't. You need to look at who's getting results here and who's not. We can get information as to what you just said. You're not quoting even one of our meetings. I'm naming your people. You're not naming ours. You can't name even one. You've called all over the place looking for them. No one will help you because you're a monster. They don't feel sorry for you any more than they feel sorry for BTK. And you're a cop killer. You're a fucking cop killer. That makes it even worse. There's a thing called cop family. There's a thing called cop family. We don't leave one behind. We just don't do it. And we didn't see TPD step up and go, here's the facts. Here's the evidence. See, this doesn't match up to what they say. Jason, Detective White. And we, we take care of our own. But you see me doing it at all costs. At all costs. It, this could cost me my life, and I know that. I'm fully aware of that. I'm doing it anyway. That's what you do, right? During an active shooter, the guy who's training TPD says, you're going to walk in there and you could get shot. So you signed up for that. You could, you could not walk out. You signed up for that. Right, Mr. Perry? There's decisions we make we know that could cost of our, us our lives. At the end of the day, it's worth it. If it relieves suffering caused by crime for other people, it's worth it. It's called making a difference in the world in a positive one. We want to be able to tell your victims, you're safe now, he will never hurt you again. We slayed your dragon. He's gone. And watch the relief on everybody's face. 
and let them watch them enjoy life finally and not have to deal with you causing one problem after another after another making everything fun unfun every fucking up everything they try to do everything good becomes a mess when you walk in the room and when you're around you just get some sick fucked up thrill making everybody else's life a living hell and nobody understands why the hell you do that so um we're not letting this go he changed his story why would he do that what kind of coercion did you put on him what threats did you make what threats did you make charles to make gene mitchell completely change what he said here to a completely different thing he said in the courtroom i want to know what you threaten him with what'd you bribe him with did something that's what you do to everybody did you threaten him with loss of a job and loss of a home too nobody feels sorry for you uh, go tell mark every time his clients called the name tell teacher the bully was called the name and those guys in creek county oh i think you can dish it out but you can't take it and she's not dishing it out like you are nobody's trying to ruin your car or take your home she just called you a name boo fucking who here's your tissue so yeah that made everybody even more mad mr perry but you do what you do anybody else involved in this all i'm going to say is you better know what i know you better do diligence because my guys can prove it in their case and they will and they are and uh when, I, when that happens it's going to look bad on what you're doing now if you don't do it well do it with excellence due diligence make sure you have it all right get it right because why not do it now instead of looking bad later i mean that's your choice everybody lives with their choices right yep